Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about completing the square. And a lot of students uh, tend to get confused about completing the square. And uh, let me go ahead and tell you what's going on in this video. So what we have here is a quadratic equation. Now, for those of you out there that are studying Algebra 1, Algebra 2, the courses like that, you should be able to look at this equation and be like, well, if I had to solve this equation, I could uh, use the quadratic formula. Okay, and of course, you would want to do that. However, you're going to be asked to do something called complete the square. Okay, I almost guarantee that all of you will have a question like this or a few questions like this on your test and quizzes. So it's a very specific procedure. I'm going to walk through it and show you exactly how to use uh, completing the square to get the solutions to this problem. Now, if you want to try to uh, complete the square and figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And if you have notes on completing the square, feel free to use those as well. It is a little bit involved, but I think that, uh, you know, by you watching this video, it may uh, clear up any confusion that you uh, might have about this particular technique. But again, just don't solve this quadratic equation anyway. Use specifically completing the square. Okay, so I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, then I'm going to do this uh, step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the solution. Again, this is a quadratic uh, equation. So uh, if you know a thing or two about quadratic equations, there's always two solutions uh, in a quadratic equation. So let's go and take a look at the solution. So this would be the final correct answer. Okay, so if you got this right and you did this by completing a square and you did this without the aid of any notes, well, wow, that is very impressive. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face, an A++. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna give you like 175% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you definitely know a thing or two about solving quadratic equations. They'll be so impressed with that information. They'll be like, the next time I need a math tutor, I'll call you up. So that's outstanding uh, if you're able to do this problem. Now, if you got something kind of close to this, if you're thinking that you were doing the problem correct by completing the square, well, uh, let's see where you may have uh, made an error. Now, uh, real quick before we get started, okay, I'm going to go through this procedure. I'm kind of uh, going to explain it, obviously, as I go through it, but it's not going to be like a formal lesson. If you need help with anything quadratic equations to include completing the square, I would uh, strongly suggest you check out my Algebra 1 program. You can find that at my Math Help program. But uh, anyways, when you're solving quadratic equations, there's various techniques you can solve, okay? It all depends on the format of the uh, particular equation. Sometimes you can take the square root of both sides. Sometimes you can factor. Now, when you can take the square root of both sides, you definitely want to do that. When you can factor, you definitely want to do that. And when you can't do either one of these techniques, we use our good old friend, the quadratic formula, because this will solve any and all quadratic equations. But kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula is something called the uh, completing the square technique. And again, uh, this is what we're going to be focusing on here. And it's not really optional that you like, uh, well, I don't really you know, need to know this because I understand this rest of this stuff. Well, no, you are going to need to know this as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. And uh, I'll just explain what I'm doing along the way. But uh, if you need a more detailed formal lesson and uh, more practice, which certainly you're going to need if you don't fully understand this, again, check out like my Algebra 1 course, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 course, uh, courses. The, that will definitely kind of, you know, be a good follow on uh, for those of you that, out there that are struggling with this. All right. So here we go. So here is our equation. The first step when you are looking to complete the square is you need to have your constant or your number value on the right hand side. So here we have uh, this in standard form. So I'm going to move this one on the other side. So specifically got all your variables over here and your number over there. So this is how we start off. Okay. 
Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to get a 1 in front of your x squared or y squared, or the case, whatever variable it is. So we need to get a, a 1 in front of it. You can see here we have a 2. Okay, so how can we get a uh, 1 in this position? Well, all we need to do is divide everything by 2, and that leading coefficient becomes 1. All right, so uh, again, we have to move that uh, constant over to the right-hand side and then get this uh, leading coefficient 2, 1. So the way we're going to do that is divide this by 2, but we have to divide everything else by 2. Okay, so when we do this, we um, have the following equation. So x squared plus 5 halves x is equal to 1 half. And again, uh, you know, hopefully you understand the steps why, you know, were, uh, you know, uh, why it was necessary to take those couple steps to get down from our starting uh, equation to get to this right here. Now, sometimes your um, equation that you're dealing with, you don't have to take those extra steps that I just did. Sometimes you're already kind of set up for success. But if your uh, quadratic equation is not in a proper format, you cannot even start the completing the square uh, technique. Okay, so this is our starting point. We're ready to go. Let's go ahead and get started now. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is to go to this middle term, this middle coefficient. So not the x squared, the, uh, the coefficient in front of the x. So in this case, it's 5 halves. And you take this, and by the way, this procedure, you, you would apply to any and all quadratic equations that you're trying to use, uh, the completing the square technique to solve. Okay, so you're going to take that middle coefficient here, and you're going to divide it by 2. Now, when you're dividing it with something by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So I'll take 5 halves and multiply by 1 half, which again is divided by 2, and you get the lovely fraction 5 over 4. Okay, so again, I'm assuming uh, those of you out there are uh, you know, pretty familiar with just solving uh, regular quadratic equations and just you know basic algebra at this point to include fractions, but any of this stuff that you don't understand, just make a little you know list of things like I don't get this, I don't get that, I don't get this, and then follow on and improve what you need to improve. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've taken this middle coefficient right there and we divided it by two. And in this case, we multiply by one half, same thing. We're gonna take that answer, and our answer again was five fourths, and we're gonna square it. Okay, we're gonna square the answer. So five fourths square is just five force square. So I'll just leave it like this for the time being. Of course, that's equal to 25 over 16, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so now that we did all of that, what do we do with this um, uh, result right here, right? So we divided the uh, middle term by uh, 2, and then we took that answer and uh, squared it. So now what we're going to do is add that result to both sides of the equation. We're going to add 5 4 squared to both sides of the equation. All right, so that's what it's going to look like right here. So we have x squared plus 5 halves x plus 5 fourths squared. And again, remember on this side of the equation, we had 1 half, but we're adding uh, 5 fourths squared to both sides. Remember in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you uh, as long as you do the same thing equally to the other side, you are in good shape. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me, like, okay, I get where you're going. So now at this point, let's go ahead and start clearing up, uh, 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 simplifying uh, some of these expressions here. So on this left-hand side, we have x squared plus 5 halves x, and we'll go ahead and actually square 5 4 square. So that gives us 25 over 16. And then on this side here, we'll go ahead and write our 5 4 squared as 25 over 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, add these fractions right here. So that's 1 half plus 25 over, uh, 25 over 16. So uh, pretty easy here. I can just uh, multiply uh, this fraction by 8. So we have a common denominator of 16. So that's going to give me 8 over 16 plus 25 over 16, which, of course, is 33 over 16. Now, I'm hoping all of you are experts in fractions. Uh, now, if you're taking an algebra course and you're still shaky on fractions, I would call that a math emergency. Uh, I have a ton of videos on fractions on my YouTube channel and in my pre-algebra and math foundations course if you need additional help. Okay, so if you're with me so far, you're like, okay, I, I'm with you, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Let's continue on. Very, very good. All right, so remember, 
we have this side. We just added these two fractions. That's 33 over 16. So let's go ahead and see the result. All right, so we have x squared plus 5 halves x plus 25 over 16 is equal to 33 over 16. So we are in pretty good shape. I would say we're probably about halfway through the problem. All right, so what do we do now? Well, what we do at this stage, okay, once you've um, taken half of this middle coefficient, uh, divided it by 2, squared it, and then added that to both sides, and then cleaned up um, you know, the uh, results of doing that, at this point, what you've created is a perfect square. Now, if you kind of, um, you know, uh, look at the title of this video, Completing the Square, well, what does that mean? Well, we're trying to construct a perfect square, all right? A perfect square would be something like x plus 1 squared is equal to 9, okay? This is right here, a perfect squared. So what we want to do at this point, okay, is factor this quadratic trinomial, but we already know it's going to be a perfect square. So how do we uh, write this or factor this as a perfect square? Well, all we need to do is take the square root of this and the square root of this. And what's the square root of 25 over 16? Well, it's just that 5 fourths, right? Because we took that 5 fourths and squared it. And then what's the square root of x squared? It's x. So it's always going to be the same thing. So this x squared we're going to write as x, and this 25 over 16, we're going to write as 5 over 4, but all this is going to be in a parentheses squared, okay? Now, if you multiplied this right here, if you're like, well, you know, let me see if I, you know, uh, believe you, Mr. YouTube Math Man, take your uh, x plus 5 over 4 and square it, x plus 5 over 4, right? So that's what it means to square it. If you multiply these uh, two together, you would get back to this right here, okay, x squared plus 5 halves plus 25 over 16. Again, we're going to factor it. So instead of you trying to like figure out the factors of this, just know it's going to be the square root of this and the square root of this. And uh, anyway, so this is the whole idea in doing the, uh, completing the square. We're constructing a perfect square. And then, of course, we're going to factor it. All right, so if you're with me so far, then uh, we are getting close to the final answer. Okay, so we have x plus uh, 5 fourths, all this squared is equal to 33 uh, over 16. So what can I do? Well, now I can take the square root of both sides. Okay, now I can take the square root of both sides, just like this. And what's the square root of x plus 5 fourths squared? It's simply going to be x plus 5 fourths. Okay, so anytime you take the square root of something squared, it's just what remains, what you're squaring is going to be the answer. And then on this side, when we take the square root of 33 over 16, we're going to end up with positive and negative square root of 33 over 16. Now, anytime you are dealing with um, solving quadratic equations or equation, equations in general, uh, you want to be thinking about both the positive and negative roots of a square root. Just real quick here. So if I said, what is the square root of 4? And if you said uh, the answer is 2, you would be correct. OK, because uh, effectively uh, what we're talking about here is what we call the principal square root. And that's just the positive version of the answer. Now, if I said solve the equation x squared is equal to four, I would want to take the square root of both sides. In this case, x is going to be equal to both positive and negative uh, two. OK, so again, the square root of four is two. I don't know if I said four. If I did. I uh, digress. <laughs> let me just kind of, I'm speaking so much, there's so much information here, but let me just review again, right? If I just asked you, hey, the square, the square root of 4 is equal to what? And you just said positive 2, you would be correct, because this is the principal square root. If I said solve the equation x squared is equal to 4, you would take the square root of both sides. Here, in this case, because we're trying to solve an equation, uh, we're going to both have both positive and negative, right? Because negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive four. Okay, so you got to put in that positive and negative. Um, it's not like a little optional thing. So right here, uh, this is how we get our two roots, our two solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on, and we got to clean this uh, up right here. But uh, what do we need to do? Well, let's go ahead and uh, address this right here first before we do anything else. So the square root of 33 over 16 
is going to be equal to what? Well, I have one big square root of 33 over 16. There is a property of square roots where I can just write a small square root for the numerator and a small square root for the denominator. Just break this up. So this is going to be the square root of 33 over the, uh, the square root of 16 is going to be 4. And of course, this will be positive and negative. Okay, so anytime you can simplify a square root, you need to do so, all right? In this case, you would need to do so, uh, what we call rationalizing the denominator. So a lot of moving parts here. That's why I told you in the beginning of this video that a lot of algebra students kind of struggle with completing the square because you're tasked with a lot of different type of things. Okay, so now let's kind of take a look where, where we're at. All right, so we simplified the square root of 33 over 16. Now we got it down to positive negative square root of 33. I'm sorry, the square root of 33 over 16. So we got it down to positive negative square root of 33 over 4. So to solve for x, I'm going to simply subtract negative 5 fourths from both sides of the equation. And we have this. Okay, but we're not done because, look, we have two fractions with the same denominator. So in this case, we could just simply write this over one fraction bar. So this is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 30, 33 over 4. Now, what does this mean right here, uh, this plus or minus? Just to be super clear about this, this means that one solution is negative 5 plus the square root of 3 over 4, and the other solution is negative 5 minus the square root of 3 over 4. So two unique, unique real number solutions. Okay, so if some of you are just like flabbergasted, maybe you're just like, oh my goodness, my hair is going out like, I got to do this on a test, completing a square? No way. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'll just skip that question. Um, I'll still get like maybe a 90% on my test. Well, you don't want to do that because, um, you know, completing the square and constructing perfect squares is going to come up from time and time again in more advanced mathematics. And this is certainly not beyond your ability to learn. Okay. So never kind of shy away from something that seems complex, you know, um, you know, when you first start learning something, especially mathematics, there's a lot of stuff out there. If, you know, when you first start learning something, you're like, oh, this is very, very difficult. But if you stick with it, eventually you'll get comfortable with it. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, comprehend it and master it, right? So just remember, if you truly want to get excellent at mathematics, you have to work at everything skill by skill, okay? And it's not enough to watch me solve, um, you know, a problem. You have to practice this stuff yourself. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.